what we need to do is to combine those implicit inspectors with our new Java 5 inspector. And we can do this using a composite inspector. I will configure my composite inspector to use the implicit inspectors, which were a property type inspector and a meta-widget annotation inspector and my new inspector, which is my Java 5 inspector. And I'll run that again. OK, so this time, the, both the original fields and the new gender field with its combo box appear. This idea of combining multiple inspectors to inspect different characteristics of your existing architecture is very powerful. MediWidget comes with many pre-written inspectors for many different architectures, from JPA and Hibernate validator annotations, to Struts config XML files, to Groovy and, and Scala properties. MediWidget will gather and combine UI information from wherever it can find it. There are several ways to control the layout of the components. I'll demonstrate this by adding a few more fields to my person class. And again, all this code is coming from the tutorial, which is available in the distribution. But if you're feeling lazy, <laughs> I'm happy to work that along for you. So here we've added some new annotations and some new fields to define some new widgets. And we're doing this so that we can play with the layout. At the moment, we've added a JText area, which resizes correctly, um, and, a, and a section heading, and a couple of employer and department fields. So the built-in layout, the default layout, is using grid bag layout. I can tweak this in various ways, for example, I can change how many columns there are. Now, as you saw before, we have a, a grid bag layout, but around the grid bag layout, we had a separator, which we were using to separate the section headings. And so I will add that in as well. And I will set this as the layout on my meta widget. So now when I run the code, the UI is arranged in two columns and resizes correctly using grid bag layout. Instead of the separator for the work section heading, I can choose a different separator or a different method of separating sections. For example, I can use tabs. If I change it to use a tabbed pane layout decorator instead of a, a separator layout decorator, I 
and then run the code. You can see that now the work section has been placed inside a tab. Again, if you ever tried using grid bag layout by hand, you'll appreciate how much easier MetaWidget makes all of this. There are several ways to control which widgets MetaWidget creates. One way is to add child widgets inside the Swing MetaWidget. This approach is good um, for working both within the Swing API and within a visual UI builder. So we'll try adding a combo box to override the existing checkbox for the retired field. And you can see the retired field is now a combo box, not a checkbox. And it does this because the combo box we created had the same name as MetaWidget would have given the retired checkbox. You can suppress a widget's creation entirely by using stub widgets. So here we've added a stub widget The retired checkbox is now completely gone and the gender drop down has been shifted to the left. This configuration code here can be made external. This is useful for keeping config common configuration code outside of your main code base. And it's also good for languages and UI frameworks other than Swing, where getting at the actual API can be quite cumbersome. For example, um, JSP shields you from the Java code. To create an external configuration, we'll make a new XML document and call it MetaWidget. And in this, we will place our XML configuration. I'm just cutting and pasting this from the tutorial. It essentially says the same thing. It says we're setting up a composite inspector, which, is, which contains a list of inspectors, the property type inspector, the annotation inspector, and the Java 5 inspector. And we are setting up a tabbed pane decorator with a grid bag layout and two columns. And having established that, we can then remove much of this configuration code and replace it with a line to call the external configuration. If I run the code, you get the same result, except this time we're configuring externally, not through our Java code. Now it could be argued that UI-oriented annotations such as UI comes after sit uncomfortably on a business class from a separation of concerns perspective. It has advantages in that it keeps the metadata close to the data it's referring to, and it's also sufficiently abstract that it doesn't tie us to any particular UI framework. However, for, if you need a different approach, MetaWidget can use different inspectors to gather information from almost any source. One example is to use an XML inspector. So I'll create a little XML file that will contain my metadata. Again, I will cut and paste this from the tutorial. But essentially, this is saying the same thing as the annotations were saying, whereby the uh, name property, we, we, we decided to hide that. The notes is a large field. The employer property is inside a section called work. And having created this class, we will now be able to remove all the annotations from the person class. and tell our meta widget to use an XML inspector instead of an annotation inspector to 
read the XML. So now when I run the code again, we get the same result, but it is pulling that metadata from a different source. This idea of UI characteristics being derivable from different backend sources is fundamental to MetaWidget. There's a lot of metadata already lurking in our backend systems, and we just need to be able to extract it. MetaWidget comes with a range of inspectors, and it's straightforward to write your own to inspect anything from XML configuration files to database schemas to annotations. The inspection pro process is decoupled from the widget creation process so that the same inspector can supply information to multiple UI frameworks. That concludes part one of the MetaWidget tutorial. Thanks for listening.